Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, September the 23rd, and we are continuing on with our Every Bit Counts Challenge. Now, this morning, my nose itches every time I get on the camera. <laughs> oh, we'll see. Uh, this morning, I have a bunch of paperwork that I need to do with my husband, but before I do that, I am going to get a project done for the Every Bit Counts Challenge. And this morning, we are just going to can some beef chunks. There is nothing sexy about this. There is nothing complicated about this. But honest to gosh, on a night where I need something fast, if I have beef chunks already canned, I can pull them out and do whatever I want with them, okay? I've kind of given up on trying to do meals in a jar. I just, for my palate, I just don't care for them so far. So I'm going to just stick with the basics. So I've already got things started for you. Um, right here, we have... A couple pounds of beef chunks which I have rinsed I hate touching raw meat but things must be done I have my four pint jars washed cleaned and ready to go I have my lids ready to go so let me bring you down here and let's take a look I'm just going to add a half a teaspoon of salt per pint just like so and then I'm going to pack these in these room temperature jars. Well, they're kind of cool. And my meat. Let me grab my funnel. Okay, I have the funnel. I have washed my hands a second time. I'm just going to go ahead and fill these jars. And I'm going to use my, my washed hand to do it. Like I said, I don't love this, but this is what it is. I'm just going to try to see. I think I might only have enough meat to do three pints. So let's start with that. I, don't, I think that's going to be the case. Yeah. Okay, so we're only going to get three pints, but you know what? That's three meals that I have a head start on come later this fall. Okay, there we go. It's as easy as that, people. Let me get this over here and wash my hands again. And I left you on camera because that's the way I roll. Okay, all right, clean hands for the third time today. Just making sure they're good. Okay, so at this point, all we really need to do is put the lids on. So I want to wipe the edges of my jars, even though uh, this meat is not, you know, sloppy or messy or anything like that. We're still gonna do what we always do. Make sure that's squeaky clean. We're gonna add the rim. And, or not the rim, the lid and the rim. Fingertip tight. We're gonna stick it in coolish water. We're going to do the same for this jar. Now I am in the mood to can a bunch of other things today, but my husband needs my help with a bunch of paperwork. So I need to get this where the pressure canner doesn't need me anymore. And then I have to spend a couple hours doing boring paperwork with Honey Bunny. Don't love it, but not everything can be a fun day, right? I saw some recipes that I really want to make. Uh, one is a zucchini tomato sauce. One is enchilada sauce. There's a Tex-Mex corn recipe I want to make. There's a couple of meat dishes I want to make. Okay. So, all three of those are good to go. That's how easy that was, right? 
All right, freed up some room in my freezer, which I need. And let's do it. Let's start by plugging in the pressure canner, shall we? Pressure canner is on. I'm gonna follow my manufacturer's instructions, but just in case you wanna watch, here we go. We are going to go from open to close. We are going to put our valve up here on exhaust where it stays for the first part of this pressure cooking. We're going to hit pressure cook high and we're gonna go 75 minutes for pints. I think it's 75 minutes. Yes. 75 minutes and then we're going to hit start and we are good to go. So just like that, that was what the work was. Everything else really isn't work. And uh, we will have three pints of beef stew, not beef stew, but meat that we could use for beef stew, for vegetable beef soup, for beef stroganoff, for anything that we wanted. And we are not committed, right? We don't have a jar of it sitting on our uh, pantry shelves if we don't like it. Okay, that's where we're at. Got a few lids left. Let me go rinse this jar and I will see you guys when this is all done. That's Grandma. Grandma, do you want to say good morning? She doesn't because she's looking at all of her birds, her crows, and her squirrels. Grandma, are you being antisocial this morning? I guess so. <laughs> uh, she does not want to say hello to you guys. I can't make her do stuff, so let's let her be. Okay. <laughs> Oh my God, she's funny. Okay, this is Deanna with Food Bank Beautiful. And today we are going to maybe finish up our Everything Counts Challenge. Now, if you've been watching, you know that I missed it in August because I was sick for a few weeks, but I'm doing it in September and I'm not able to do it daily because I have, you know, a lot of responsibilities. My biggest responsibility is sitting right over there being antisocial. Oh, she might have given you guys the bird. <laughs> I'm not saying she did, but she might have. So I've had to do my 31 projects as the days allow. And I think today we might get them done. So this is what we're going to do. We are going to make a recipe called Mediterranean tomatoes and zucchini, and we are using everything out of our garden except my spices. Now, I read all of your comments from the last video, and one of you said how much you enjoy the timestamp. Not that I timestamp the videos for you because mm -mm, I don't, but I do try to tell you where we are in real time. So today is Tuesday, the 23rd, and it is 10.30 in the morning. And I am going to make for you a recipe called Mediterranean Tomatoes and Zucchini. And I am going to half that recipe for four or five pints as opposed to nine or ten, because I don't know how we're going to like these. But what I love about it is we're using all of my own tomatoes. So I'm gonna wash those, put a pot of water to that that roaster pan right there, that, that thing, that's not a roaster pan, but you know, a Dutch oven. We're gonna fill that up with water. I'm gonna slash X's in the buns of my tomatoes. I'm gonna give them a little bunny crack. And then we're gonna blanch them or not blanch them, but we're gonna put them in boiling water for about 30 seconds to a minute, pull them out, dunk them in ice cold water, peel the 
uh, skins off and chop them. I'm also going to wash my zucchini and we are going to do um, chop them into chunks. I measured everything out on my little scale and uh, that's what we're going to do. So I will bring you along for some of that. I don't know if it'll be a full tutorial because it's not a canning tutorial. It is every little bit counts project, but I will definitely refer you back to the recipe that I used. Okay, so let's get this done. This is my, my own zucchini too. I'm pretty proud of myself, people. I think this will be, um, you know, good. Now, yesterday, so I think it'll still be on this same video, we did three pints of roast beef in its own juice, and then I had one that did not seal, and it is right here. And today, I'm going to make some sort of a uh, beef and rice dish for the family and we'll eat it up. So no worries, people. I have two pints of roast beast to go on my shelves. All right, I have a lot of work to do. I'm only gonna bring you along to spot check kind of where we're at. So let me get started. I've got jars to wash, tomatoes to take care of. I got all kinds of things. Now the second project, is going to be really, really simple. You don't have to be super fancy, people. I have this big zucchini and half of this zucchini. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and shred it and put it into one cup uh, little baggies and toss them in my freezer because I need to preserve them. I really wanna make zucchini pineapple bread, but I don't have um, room right now to put four loaves of zucchini pineapple bread in my freezer. So I'm just gonna hold off on the baking of that, but I am gonna go ahead and take care of the zucchini. Then I'll do a quick count, and if I'm right where I'm supposed to be, we are done with the Every Bit Counts Challenge. If we're not, hmm, I'll have to make something else. <laughs> All right, let me get started and I'll bring you up to speed. Okay, I have my hot water right there, right that blue pan. Hmm. Apparently I can't direct with the knife. There we go, right there. Uh, bringing the water up to boil. Here I have four wide mouth pint jars. Um, I've hand washed them and now they're going to go ahead and sit in hot water for a while. I'm gonna go ahead and wash my tomatoes. And for those of you who don't know this, the easiest way to peel a tomato is to put a big X in the bottom like that. And then when your water's boiling, you toss it in for 30 seconds to a minute, then you put it in ice cold water and then these peels just slip off. So that's what I'm doing right now. In case you were thinking I might be having too much fun, this is what I'm doing right now. Okay, I have half my zucchini pieces to about this size. I don't want them to get lost in the sauce. They might anyway, but at least I'm going to start with some good sized chunks. They're roughly, they're probably just the tiniest bit bigger than one inch, but we're going to go with it. It'll be all right. All right, I am waiting for my water to boil for the tomatoes. So while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to go ahead and shred my zucchini for the second project. And maybe we can get that taken care of before we get too far down the road. And if so, that will be fabulous. Just cutting the ends off now. And you guys all know how to shred, so I'll bring you down for a second, but you don't have to stay for the whole thing, okay? All right, here we go, down here, people. Right there. it's as easy as that. Try not to break your fingers. 
and I will bring you back when this bowl is full. All right, I got that little job done. And so we made five little bags of zucchini, one cup per bag. And this is not ideal long-term storage, but I know that I'm gonna be using these within the next 30 days, so I am not worried about it. Let's look at them down here. There they are, right there. And then I'm going to put them in another bag that is labeled. And um, then they are not gonna get lost or they're not gonna get so old that I don't remember what they are. I'm just gonna go ahead and pop those in here like so and put those in my freezer. So they are in essence double bagged, but again, this would not be ideal for long term. If I needed them to go six months to a year or anything beyond the three month mark, I would use my vac and seal, which I don't use very often because I hate to get it out. <laughs> All right, let me go put this in the freezer. My tomato water is close to boiling, so I'm going to take those skins off and dice the tomatoes. You don't need to see me do that, but I'll show you the finished part. All right, my tomatoes are peeled. That was so easy. I'm going to let those sit right here for a minute while I gather up the spices, and then we're going to dice and core those tomatoes a little bit. We're going to stick them in the Dutch oven along with the zucchini and the spices. We're going to bring to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, we're going to turn the heat down and simmer it for 10 minutes. So let me grab these spices. All right, let me bring you down here and let's get our spices in a bowl, okay? Let me put these down here so you can see. All right, here we go. So the first thing it's going to call for is one tablespoon of garlic powder. And I'm pretty sure that is all that I have. Yep. So I will put that on my shopping list uh, when I get a chance. A half a tablespoon of oregano. And I'm going to go ahead and use a whole... Oregano, marjoram, thyme, basil, and parsley flakes. I'm going to use a whole tablespoon, and then I'm not going to put this thyme in because uh, I'm not sure that I love thyme in my canning. I don't know why. So let me add a half a teaspoon of rosemary right there. Half a teaspoon of basil. Now I have some basil in here. But we love basil, so I'm just going to go ahead and add another half a teaspoon. And then it's going to call for a half a tablespoon of salt. And I, of course, am going to use canning salt. And I don't love a lot of salt, so I'm just going to use that much. Okay, and that is it. Now... I am going to run over to the stove and take my cutting board with me because dicing tomatoes is messy and I want to do it by the sink for easy cleanup. Um, and then I'm going to stick them in that Dutch oven and we're going to boil it, bring it to a boil. And then, like I said, we're going to simmer for 10 minutes. <laughs> and then we get to can. <laughs> Come on, you guys. Get excited. Come on. This has got to make you get in your own garden and get in your own kitchen and just do, you know, witchy things. <laughs> if you don't have a garden and you don't want to go to the farmer's market and buy all these things, you can do it through me vicariously. All right, probably better than me vicariously. All right, people, let's get it done because I got things to do. I have two interviews today, one at 1 o'clock and one at 3.30 for Grandma to have a live-in caretaker who takes care of her four days a month, not every day. I, I am Grandma's person. <laughs> but um, both of these ladies sound absolutely lovely, either one of them, unless they show up on the door and it's a 
you know, hmm, <laughs> uh, probably either one of them could be just fine. One of them works in the school district and the other one is retired and has a little granddaughter that lives in the area. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Cross your fingers because we really need this. All right, I'll be back. All right, just like that, we have three pints of Mediterranean tomatoes and zucchini uh, out of my own garden in the canner. And the canner is started and ready to go. Now, I did have this much, which is not enough to can, but I'm going to let it sit on the counter and cool for a little while. And then I'm going to pull out my rice cooker and I'm going to make a pot of rice and use this as um, some of the liquid. And I want to see how that is because I believe that it will be yummy. And if so, I remember that when I read that recipe for the first time, that's how I thought I would use it. So we will see. Now, I tasted it. My husband tasted it. It's delicious. So um, it's not overpowering. So if I need more spice in whatever, you know, food item I'm making down the road, I can add it at that time. Uh, but I love it. And mostly, I just love that everything, tomatoes and zucchini, were out of my garden. I like it. Okay, let me clean up my mess. I think Grandma's ready for nap. Grandma, are you ready for nap? She's, she's not even going to answer, you guys. <laughs> no, she just gave me a little hand signal. <laughs> Wasn't the hand signal, but, you know, she's ready to go to bed. It's in my best interest to go put her down for a nap. Yeah. So we can all live happily in the house. Yeah. <laughs> Except uh, the problem is, is that grandma is generally not the one who is crabby. It is generally me, not her. She's easygoing. She takes everything like it comes. She's happy. Mm. Change does not bother her. You know, hmm. I, on the other hand, people am a completely different nightmare. All right, I will show you these when they come out of the canner to cool. And I think I'll go back and check my notes and make sure that was Project 30 or 31. And if so, we have finished the Everything Counts Challenge. Woo! Even though we did it in September. <laughs> I don't think Jessica at Three Rivers Homestead is going to mind. I just don't think so. I think she'll be happy that we did it at all. All right, I'll see you in a little while. All right, I'm going to do one more quick little thing, and then I need to go get ready for the interview. I pulled out my rice pot, and my instructions are one cup of rice and two cups of liquid. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to get all the rice off the edges and down on the bottom where it belongs. There we go. And I'll bring you down here because this is just rocket science, people. Right there. And I'm going to use, I wonder if I should try to strain this. Hmm. Hmm. Two cups of liquid. So there's one. There's almost two, so I'm going to add a little bit more. Kind of got the jar. We'll see what we can do. And that looks just about right. So we're going to put that in there. Give it a little mix. And we're going to pop it into our rice pot. Plugged in, yep. Yeah. Turn it on. And we're going to hit right rice. And there we go. Okay, at least we'll know if that stuff makes good rice. We'll find out. Okay, I have to go do something about this. I don't want to scare somebody who I want to, you know, help me out with grandma. All right, I will see you guys in a little bit.
All right, everybody. It's still Deanna. It's still Tuesday. It is about two o'clock in the afternoon. And I just wanted to share with you that I did pull out my three cans of zucchini and tomatoes. And with that um, jar that was left, I made the rice. Once I made the rice, I pulled the rice out. I added a tablespoon of dry taco seasoning, a little bit of water, heated it up on the stove, had a little bit of hamburger left in my refrigerator that was already cooked. So I made myself a taco rice bowl with a little bit of cheese and some jalapeno uh, peppers on the top. And let's see how yummy this is. I'm gonna want a pepper. Ooh, that's hot. Can you see the steam? <laughs> wee, 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 wee. I don't know if I can, If I wonder if it's too hot to taste for you. No, it's all right. Okay, here we go. You ready? Mmm. That is so good. Now I have an avocado here, but I feel like it needs to ripen for another day. But I am going to sit down and eat this because I am starving. And I will be making more of this tomatoes and zucchini as my garden allows. Uh, if I do nothing other than make this rice dish, it is 100% worth it. It is delicious. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. All right, it is Thursday, the 26th of September, and it is about 1220, give or take, in the afternoon. And I am in the middle of numerous projects. One is cleaning out all of my cupboards and reorganizing my pantry, but not in my tiny, tiny little kitchen. I am moving my pantry to a spare room, storage room down the hall, and it is looking good. So that is nice to know. But while I am working on these projects, two things. I am going to go ahead and can another full batch, should be eight or nine pints of tomatoes and zucchini, with the tomatoes that I got in my garden, I needed 104 ounces and I had 103.9 of my own homegrown tomatoes minus two tomatoes that I got at the food bank yesterday. And I don't have any more zucchini in my garden. I think I'm getting everything I'm going to get. It's just too cold and I don't see anything even started out there. So for me, zucchini season is over. But I did get these yellow squash. And I got four of them, if you will recall. And I'm going to use three of them. I think I needed um, 39 ounces and I weighed them out and that is 39 ounces. So I'm gonna go ahead and can um, nine, eight or nine pints of these Mediterranean tomatoes and zucchini. Once I have that process taking care of itself, then I will um, go ahead and continue to work on the mess down here in my cupboards. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done. Now, I went ahead yesterday to see if we were at the 31 projects, which is, I think there's 31 days in August. <laughs> anyway, I already counted for 31 days in August. So even if there's 30 in my mind, we still have one more project to do. And I am going to do that one tomorrow. And it is going to be a white bean and butternut squash canned soup. Now, um, the recipe says I need to soak my beans overnight. So I'm gonna start those tonight, but I'm gonna walk you through that process. You can see the last project, and then we'll get the last of our Everything Counts Challenge, Every Bit Counts Challenge uh, over with. And I think we did really good. <laughs> uh, I did the work, 
but uh, I was motivated because you guys take the time to watch my channel and uh, you guys get the credit because you will have sat through I don't know how many episodes of everything counts challenge every bit counts challenge so I'm just gonna go ahead and be moving along you probably won't see me until tomorrow just know that I'm gonna soak a couple cups of beans tonight and you know get started on that soup tomorrow all right it is cold and rainy very cold I don't even know if it's like 55 degrees even but it's cold okay I will see you guys a little bit later I'm gonna cut up this zucchini and get a move on see how you can use something random that you get at the food bank to can if you've got some stuff nothing wrong with that we'll be eating these all winter long based on one trip to the food bank now the tomatoes were all mine minus two tomatoes I don't know if you can see them but they're over there there we go all right I will see you guys later ta-ta good morning everybody this is Deanna with food bank beautiful and it is Friday the 27th at about mm, 9 a.m. And I have been up since six o'clock, but mostly I've just been relaxing. I just got grandma up, gave her a cup of coffee. Uh, I'm gonna start one or two quick little things and then I'm gonna make her some breakfast. But today we are going to finish up the Every Bit Counts Challenge. And the thing that I am going to make is a white bean and roasted butternut squash soup that I can can. Now that, uh, that is awesome. I think that soup is going to be so delicious, but it is a little bit, um, labor intensive. There's a number of steps starting with dry beans that I had to soak overnight. And I think you can see them right there in that glass bowl. So one of the first things I need to do is rinse those beans and then I need to throw them in with six quarts of water and just let them kind of come to a boil and then simmer for 30 minutes. In the meantime, I have to chop all kinds of vegetables. I have to broil my butternut squash cubes. There's a number of things to do. So I need to get started on that. Also, because I took my tiny itty bitty kitchen and made a pantry out of a very small room in the back of the house. I have moved all of my food products mostly out there. Um, it looks fantastic. I love it. But now I have to clean my cupboards. I have to reorganize pots and pans, move dishes, um, all kinds of things. So I'm excited about it, but it's a lot of work. However, we're going to get it done. <laughs> All right, just wanted to show you, um, I'll show you down here. You can see that I have five pints of zucchini and tomatoes. Actually, it's yellow squash, but it cans the same. And the jars, they look really um, nice, I think. You can see that I have um, the squash a little bit, um, you can see it in the last one. I didn't read the directions as well as I should have, and you were supposed to boil it for just the tomatoes for 10 minutes. Uh, bring it to a boil. I'm sorry. Bring it to a boil, just the tomatoes. Then turn it down to simmer and simmer it for 10 minutes, and then add the uh, zucchini, bring it back to a boil. When it comes to a boil, knock it down, down to simmer. And I missed the part about knocking it back down to simmer in my first batch. And so the definition of the zucchini is not as nice as it is in here. Doesn't matter. It tastes super yummy. So we're not going to lose any sleep over it. Now, I've got to, my kitchen, my counter space is really a mess, so um, I don't know how much I will show you. I may just show you, you know, little tiny steps of the process. This will not be meant to be a tutorial of any kind. This is just, let's finish up that, you know, that every bit counts challenge. 
Um, and sadly, in the cookbook that I'm using, and I'll give you the name of it later, um, there's about six or seven soups that I want to make. Um, they're mostly vegetarian, and um, later you puree them down, and then you add cream, and then they become unvegetarian, maybe, if you're vegan and don't eat dairy, which is fine, but this girl, she loves her dairy. <laughs> so I could give up meat before I could give up dairy. I'm not really... I mean, meat is okay, but I don't, I don't miss it when I don't have it. So that's good. All right. Let me get this little show on the road. Let's get this done today. Let's finish up the every bit counts challenge. Also, um, you know that I graded the zucchini earlier. You saw the episodes. Yesterday, I had a yellow squash left, and I was able to grate it down and get three additional one-cut bags of grated squash. So when I make zucchini bread, um, I will use one cup yellow, one cup green until I run out of the yellow, and then everything else will be green. It'll be perfect, people. Nothing to worry about. All right. Let's get it done. Let's have a great day. <laughs> All right, I'll be back. We have made a tiny bit of progress. Let's see if I can show you over here. Right there in that canner, I have my four cart quart jars. They're going to be just um, in boiling water for a minute or two. Then I turn the water off and it just sits there because this is a hot pack and I need it there. I have a pot of lids. I don't know if you can see see it. It's behind that blue pan Dutch oven. And in the Dutch oven, I have the beans. Now the beans first step is to come to a boil, then drain them, then put them back in fresh water again and um, cook them for, I believe, 30 minutes. Now I have two, uh, three, <laughs> I have three deviations to this soup. Now, I want you guys to all follow the food safety directions for canning food. However, it is your kitchen. You decide what you feel comfortable with and what you don't. When I am not following 100% a USDA or whatever the name of the agency that regulates food safety uh, recipe is I'm going to tell you. So to the soup I'm making today, I am making three minor changes that I am 100% comfortable with. The first thing is that it calls for fresh tomatoes cut and diced. I don't have any fresh tomatoes because I made <laughs> zucchini and tomatoes yesterday. So I'll be using canned diced tomatoes, and I personally am fine with that as these were canned in citric acid. So I'm not worried about messing up a pH balance for these tomatoes. I'll be using five cups. So I'm using this, and then I'm using, um, I have another can or two back up until I get to five cups. Now, I want to use my store-bought stuff first, and then I want to use my canned stuff because my canned stuff is so much prettier to look at. Now, the recipe called for two cups of onion, and I'm sure that it meant fresh onion, but at the moment, I don't have any fresh onion, but you know what? I've got two cups of frozen onion, and I'm going to use it. Yes, I am. The next thing it called for is fresh butternut uh, squash soup cubed in one inch pieces. I love butternut squash. I absolutely hate to cut it. I, I cut my fingers again uh, last week dealing with the butternut squash that I canned and I don't want to do it. So from Walmart, I ordered two bags of butternut squash cubes. These are smaller than a one inch dice. I do not care. <laughs> mm -mm. I do not care. Now, I would care if I was making a soup where the butternut squash needed to be in its original form. You know, it's not a soup that you blend down or puree. But in this particular soup, you do. So, I do not care. 
So I'm going to go ahead and stick this on my cookie sheet right here. Let's go ahead and do that together. My broiler's on, so I'm getting it ready to go under the broiler. And we just want to get some nice char on some of it. Not all of it, but some. Oh, butternut squash seed. There we go. And let's go ahead and do the second bag. And I believe that is all the changes that I am making to this recipe. So, um, just so you know. I don't know, I don't believe that I'll have the patience to type this recipe out for you because it's exceedingly lengthy in all of the directions, but I will refer you back to the uh, cookbook and you don't have to buy the cookbook. Go to your library and pick it up. Or if you're on a, my library has um, audiobooks and books, and I was able to get it on my uh, library card for, you know, virtual book, and that's what I'm using right now. So, oh well, do what you have to do, people. Or you can Google butternut squash, white bean soup. There'll be a ton of recipes out there, probably a ton of them on YouTube. So I'm not too worried about you guys. I think you'll be okay. You're resourceful. You know what to do. You know what to do. Okay, let's take a look at this because this is already pretty. Isn't that gorgeous? All right, I'm going to stick this under the broiler and let it do its thing, and I'm going to fix Grandma breakfast. And while I'm fixing grandma breakfast, my stuff is doing its job. I'm taking care of steps one and two and still being a little bit productive. You might hear noise right there. That's my honey bunny. I ordered a bunch of supplies for grandma, some padding, some undie bundies, wipes, the whole nine yards. And they sat stacked up in our entryway. So when anybody came into the front door, the first thing they saw was five or six boxes of undie bundies and wipes and additional padding and the whole nine yards. And so he got tired of looking at it. And today he carried it all and put it away and put everything else away. And now he's vacuuming. Because vacuuming the entryway is something that I would never do. <laughs> no. It's not that it wouldn't need it. It's just that I don't care. All right, let's get back to this, okay? Okay, beans are on the stove, like I said. Uh, they need to come to a boil. They have not done that yet. Butternut squash is in the broiler, but it takes my broiler forever to do what it needs to do. So down here are my carrots. I've washed and peeled. And I'm just going to take those ends off and these ends off like so. And then I'm going to cut in half. Now, I wish this recipe just said cut them into rounds, but it says do a dice. So that is apparently what I am going to do. Yeah, you guys are down here. Anybody else making soup today or made soup recently or canned soup recently? We'd love to know what you did. And to Virginia, if you're watching, I hope you are safe and sound. I know in your comments you told me you were going to be in the way of the storm. And I just am hoping that you're okay and everybody else who lives in those affected states. So we're going to dice these. And just like that, they'll be done. Ta-da! There they are, magically. I'm sure they're bigger than a dice, but... I am not going to worry about it. And I'm also going to throw in this extra amount of carrot. Now, again, when you're following recipes, follow them according to the directions. If you vary from that, it is your kitchen. I don't think that per four quarts of soup, an extra tablespoon of carrots is going to make any lasting health concern problems. So we got that done. I've got my onion. I've got my carrots. Is there anything else I need to do? My butternut's in the oven. My beans are on the table. I guess I could measure. Oh, I forgot to get vegetable broth. Okay, let me go do that. All right, I'll be back. 
I don't know if any of you guys see, I spilled coffee on myself today. And uh, while I'm dinking around in the kitchen and cleaning out cupboards, I do not feel compelled to put on clean clothes. <laughs> you know, maybe later when I'm all done. Or maybe not. Maybe you'll see me tonight and I'll still be running around in a coffee stained t-shirt. That's because your girl is not fancy. Not yesterday, not today, not tomorrow. She's messy. <laughs> All right, I'll be back. Okay, let's get these tomatoes measured out. Come on down here. And we're just going to go ahead and do five cups. There's one. There's two. So I think we're going to call this three. And then this can right here should be four and five. And this is diced tomatoes. It's just that the label fell off over there on the counter. We'll measure and make sure. But I had a little extra, so I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, that's five cups. Five cups. Good enough. Okay. Now, this is also going to call for some spices. It's calling for... A tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, four garlic cloves, thyme, and thyme. And I, you've heard me say this before, I don't love thyme. So I am going to adjust my spices a tiny bit, shall we? <laughs> Let's get that tablespoon of apple cider vinegar in here and the garlic, and then we'll deal with the spices. Okay, one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Let me just double check. Yep, that's what it says. I'm going to pour it over a bowl so that I don't over measure. There we go. That's good. And then we're going to add four garlic cloves. Now, I don't have garlic cloves because I hate to peel and deal with garlic but I have this and I use it all the time so it's asking for four garlic cloves which is about uh, we're gonna call it half a teaspoon of cloves so here we go one yeah you're down here two three and four. Okay, that's looking good. Now, I want to adjust my seasoning. And I know what I like. So I am going to add uh, two tablespoons of Italian seasoning. right there. And then I'm going to add, I don't know, is it four quarts would be a quarter teaspoon per quart. I'm going to add one teaspoon of rosemary. Again, that is a little variation on what the recipe says, but I think with seasonings, you're okay. So now that is ready for me. Now I just checked my butternut squash and it has not done anything under the broiler so I'm going to find my pot holders and I am going to raise it up one more level. So let's get that done, shall we? Okay, our beans um, are in their next rinse of water, nice fresh cold water back on the oven stove, whatever you want to call it. You guys know what I'm talking about. And they just need to come to a boil. Once they come to a nice rolly boil, I will drain them and then everything goes into the stock pot. That's my timer that says check your butternut squash. So let me do that. All right. <laughs> I had to open my back door because it's hot in here hot like the fires of you know what right okay i ran out to the pantry and i got some um of my homemade chicken stock 
As you can see, I got the oldest date, 524. Uh, I need, I think I need six cups. So I'll have two cups of stock left over. That's okay. I'm going to make a Mexican rice dish for dinner tonight because I have almost a whole pint. It was too low to can, and I want to use it in the rice and make that Mexican rice dish again. Everybody really loved that. I might have an avocado. Ooh, I've got an avocado right there that'll taste so good on that um, later today. So the nice thing about canning stock in May is that today I get to use it and I didn't have to can it last night in order to have it today. Even if I had the stuff to can it, um, I don't have to worry about it. So that is very nice. So I think we are waiting now for my beans to come to a boil and to get a good char on my butternut squash. I heard the timer go off, so I'm going to check that. Here is the soup. It is on the stove. It's got to come to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, I turn the heat down and it simmers for five minutes and then we um, can it. Here are my four quarts sitting nicely in hot water. And there are my lids doing their thing beautifully. So all is well. All right, I'll come back and check on this in a little bit. All right, I have three jars in my pressure canner and I wanna show you what a jar looks like. Can you guys see that? Okay, so this is my fourth jar. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the canner and then we're gonna process this for 90 minutes, so. Here we go. From open to close, follow the directions of your manufacturer. For me, that's step one. Step two is to put this little knobby on exhaust. Then we come down here and we hit pressure cook, high, and we're gonna go 90 minutes. All right, 90 minutes, and then we hit start. Now, I am going to sit back down and take a little bit of a rest. Addie has done some things in Grandma's room for me. He vacuumed, he cleaned the entryway, he just took out the garbage for me. I'm gonna rest, then I'm gonna clean my kitchen, and then I'm gonna continue to work on getting things back to order in here. But we got this done. I'll bring you back for the finished cans, and then I will close out the every look I never say it right. Every bit counts challenge. <laughs> 31 projects as if we were in August. I don't know if August is 30 or 31 days, but apparently when I decided how many projects I was going to do, August had 31 days. Could be wrong. I don't want to check because maybe I am wrong and I did a project too many. I don't think Jessica will mind. The point is we did it. We made a plan. We got it done and it's done. Some of them were fun and elaborate. Some of them were so simple it could hardly even count, but you know what? It counted. Like she says, every bit counts. All right, I'll see you guys later when my kitchen is somewhat cleaner and uh, our soup is out. Good evening, everybody. We have made it through the day. Earlier, I said I might or might not change my coffee-stained tank top, and it appears that I did not. <laughs> However, I got a lot done. I'm reorganizing my kitchen and trying to make it a little bit um, more comfortable where things are, what we can reach, what we don't need, the whole nine yards. But what I'm here to show you now is to... Um, how to take care of your jars once you've canned something. So here are my jars of butternut and white bean soup. And you can just see how lovely that is. Now I'm going to bring you down here. Here is your jar. Now my jars are cooled. I have a rag here, a nice warm rag, and I like to do this. 
I like to go around the edges of my jars, just like this. And then I like to make sure I get the sides like that, and even the bottom if there was any seepage. And then I want to pick it up by its rim, and I want to make sure that holds nicely. Now, these are still going to sit on my counter until morning, and I'm going to check that seal in the morning. If the seal is still good, into the pantry they go. Now, this was called, I'm going to call it white bean butter nut. I know what it is. 924. I'm going to label my jars in some sort of note that I can recognize. White bean, butternut, and the date. I know it's a soup. Now with this soup, when it's time to make it, I put it all in a pot or in my blender and I puree it and then I stick it in a pot and I warm it up and I add one cup of heavy cream. And then you can garnish it with croutons or anything you want, some candied jalapenos, some avocado, some cheese, whatever sounds good to you, okay? This is what you can do when you wanna take care of your jars. We're gonna check that seal again. It looks good. So we're calling this white bean butternut. I know it's soup, so I don't need to write that on the jar. Okay, I'm going to finish the two jars without you because I'm sure you have better things to do than watch me label soup jars. Grandma is sitting over there coloring. Uh, all of her birds have gone to bed. Grandma, do you want to say hello? Hi. What are you having later tonight, Grandma? Mm. Do you remember Anthony came in and offered you something yummy? What is it? Hi. Pie, Marion Berry pie. Yeah. He came in and said he had a whole pie and he wanted to share with Grandma. And of course, Addie and I could have a piece too if we wanted. I said, Grandma doesn't want no stinking pie. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Grandma already ate her dinner and she's full and she will not want any pie. She's being silent. <laughs> I'm getting the silent treatment. Yes, Grandma's going to have some pie, I promise you. Yeah. Okay, that is it. This is the last episode of um, Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead, I think it is. And it is the Every Bit Counts Challenge. Now, I might do one more video. Um, I might lay out everything we did, the 31 projects that we did that we would have done in August had I not been a sick little puppy. But we did it in September and it counts, people. So I hope you're looking through your cupboards. I hope you're finding little projects to do. And you know, some of my projects were small, right? One project I collected seeds <laughs> and called it preservation. So it doesn't have to be fancy, you guys. Neither do you. <laughs> Just be your authentic, real self. And if your real self is comfortable running around in a little tank top with coffee stains on it, do it. <laughs> All right, do it. Be your real, authentic selves. Okay? You guys are great. Thank you so much for showing up. And I will see you next time. Grandma, do you want to say ta-ta? Ta-ta! Ta-ta, she says. All right, good night.